Welcome friends to the second part of this Flutterflow mini-series where we'll be creating our chat app. So in this video, we'll be creating this setup profile page over here where the user after registering is able to change their profile picture, able to set their phone number, their name, as well as their bio over here. And when they click confirm, they'll go to the home page over here, the chat app. So let's make this setup profile page in our Flutterflow app now. So since the setup profile page is very similar to the login page as well as the register page, we can just right click on our login page and we can duplicate the login page over here. Then we can just change the name of our login page. Let's just change it to setup page. And in our, with our, in our setup page, we can just add the title of the setup page in the column. So just under the column, we can add a child and we can just add a text. And we can bring the text all the way up to the column. So this will be the title. And in the text field over here, we'll just change it to set up your profile. And on the right hand side, we can just scroll down even more to change the text properties to make it more like a title. So let's just choose title large for the text properties. All right, looks good. Let's look at our design again. So it will have this circular image to allow the user to change their profile picture. Let's just leave it as the default one for now. We'll just deal with the other elements first. Next are the text fields for the phone number, for the name, and then for the bio. So let's just get rid of this welcome back and let's get you back in the day in the game text first. So just delete those two and let's rename this text field to phone number text field. And for the phone number text field, we'll change the label properties on the right over here to enter your phone number. And then we can also change this password text field. We'll just rename the password text field to name text field. And same thing for the label text on the right. We'll change this label text to enter your name. And because this was previously a password text field, but we changed it to a name text field. So we have to scroll down under additional properties for the password field, we want to toggle that off. So we need one more text field, which is the enter bio text field. And this will be a bigger text field. We can just duplicate the name text field first. And under the duplicated name text field, we'll change this to, we'll just rename it to the bio text field. And for this bio text field, it'll be a bit different since we want the user to be able to enter a lot more lines of text instead of just one word or one sentence or one line of text. So to do that, under max lines, we'll set it as We'll just set it as five for now. And for minimum lines, we'll just not set it at all. And for the label text, we'll also change it to enter your bio. So that's the three text fields done. And for the button, you want to change it to confirm instead of sign it. So select the button and for the button text, we'll just change it to confirm. And we'll delete this text over here. So we'll deal with the uploading of the profile image in the next video. And for this video, we'll just deal with the phone number, the name, as well as the bio. So now with the UI done, we'll just move on to our super base because we want to save this data, the user data in our super base database. So in the Superbase dashboard, under the table editor, 
we will want to create a new table. And we'll name this table user data. For now, we'll just disable role level security so that we will be able to access our data. So just disable that. So we want to change this ID column into the user ID. And for the type, it won't be of type int 8 anymore. It will be of type UUID, and this will be the user ID. We don't need this created add column. So we want to add some more columns, which is the user's phone number. It will be of type int 8. We want to add the user's name as well, which will be of type text. And lastly, we want to add the user's bio as well, which will also be of type text. So we can just click on save after this. So now we have created our user data table. So we can go back to our Flutter flow. Whenever you create a new table in your Superbase, what you must do is that you must go to settings and integrations and you must go to scroll down to Superbase and you must press get schema. So this links up your Flutter flow with your Superbase tables. And now we can add the functionality to this confirm button so that whenever the user enters their phone number, their name, as well as their bio and clicks on this confirm button, we want to upload and save the data to our Superbase table over here. But what happens if the user, let's say the user leaves out their phone number or leaves out their name? We don't want that to happen. We want the user to enter all the data, all the user's phone number, enter his name, enter the bio. We don't want the user to leave out any of this data. If not, we will get null values in our table over here. So to do that, we can implement something called a form field in Flutterflow. So, to implement a form view, we can just right click on the column over here since the column is the one that contains all the text fields over here and we'll say wrap widget. And over here, you can see there's this option for a form validation widget. So we we'll just click on that. And under this form validation widget, we want to validate the phone number text field. So the field is required, as you can see over here the name text field, as well as the bio text field. So check all three of those. And this ensures that the phone number, the name text field, as well as the bio text field are all filled before the user is able to save the data and move on to the next stage. Now let's add the functionality for our confirm button. So we can select our confirm button and we can open the action flow editor. And this action was from our previous login page. So we don't want that now, so we'll just delete this action. We want to add a new action and we want to search for validation. So we want to select this validate form widget over here, or action over here, sorry. And we can select our form to validate and this was the form that we created. So this will do the form validation. Then we want to save our data to our Superbase table. So we will search for Superbase and we want to insert a row. And for the table, we want to insert the user, we want to insert a row into our user data table that we just created in Superbase. So we want to set some fields as well. We want to set all of the four fields. For the UID, it will be, the value of the UID will be our authenticated user's UID. For the phone number, the value of the phone number field will be under widget state, our phone number text field. So same thing for the name. The value of the name field will be under widget state, our name text field, as well as for the bio. So the bio, the value of the bio will be under the widget state, the bio text field. And the last action that we want to add in this action chain is to navigate to our home page. After the data has been inserted into our Superbase table. So navigate to our home page. And that's it for the button done. One final thing that we have to do is that we have to tweak our register page a bit. 
So currently, if you go under the button register button and you go into the action flow editor, you can see that this bottom navigate automatically toggle is toggled as true. So whenever the user is authenticated, he will go into whatever login page we set over here, which is the home page. And that's not what we want. So instead of this navigate automatically toggle to be true, we will toggle that as off. And we will add our own navigation into our app. So we add a new action and we search navigate. And now we want to navigate instead of the navigate automatically, we want to navigate to the setup page. So whenever we register an account, whenever a new register, whenever a new user registers an account, he will not be sent to the home page, but will instead be sent to our setup page over here. Right, so that's all we have to do for our setup profile page. And now we can try testing our new functionality in our app. All right, so Tesma has just loaded up and we can try creating a new account. So let's just give it any a test email and a test password as well. It can be any password. And let's just try registering. Yep, as, and as you can see, it has sent up to our setup profile page. So let's just give it a phone number. And let's just try not giving it a name to see if our form validation works. So let's give it a bio. And let's just try creating our profile over here. So you can see that this field is now red and below there is some text which says the field is required. So that shows that our form validation is working well. So let's just put in our name and let's hit confirm. Yep. And as you can see, we are sent to the home page now. And that means that our profile has been successfully set up. We can go to our Superbase table as well to see if the data has been uploaded. You can see that we have successfully inserted a row for our UID, our phone number, our name, as well as our bio. I like axolotls and you should too, because they're really cute. All right, so that's the end for this video. In the next video, we'll be implementing the functionality to be able to allow the user to upload an image, upload their profile image and edit their profile image. So this image will also be uploaded to Superbase so that we will we'll be able to retrieve the user's profile image in the future as well. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new and stay tuned for the next video.